the spirit of the Enlightenment, the passion of Romanticism, the melodies of Beethoven and Mozart, the words of Fielding, Swift and Voltaire, the ideals of the United States. But what we like most about the 18th century are the dirty great battles. Long-time followers of Creative Assembly's Total War series have experienced some pretty dramatic time travel over the past eight years. From the feudal Japan of Shogun to murky medieval Europe, then all the way back to the Roman Empire, only to fast forward back to the future and the discovery of the new world. Keep up. The next stop on the timeline for these Marty McFlies of real-time strategy is 1700 to 1800 for Empire Total War. But as a period of unprecedented social, cultural and technological change, it means rich source material for the developer. And more importantly, it means massive fights at sea. We've always wanted to do naval battles and, and that's one of the, that was one of the big reasons we, uh, we chose this period. It's the great age of fighting sail. It's the perfect time to introduce naval warfare. We'll come back to the boats anon, but they're not the only change ushered into the game by this dynamic era. It's also a time of great technological change. So we've, we've, spent, we've, we've added a new technology system in, which we haven't really had before. We've obviously had a building tree before where you develop higher and higher level buildings. Um, but now we've got you know, technology research as well, which you know, is, is a really nice thing to, uh, really, it's really, it feels right, uh, it's the right time to introduce that where, you know, in the age of the Industrial Revolution. And this has led to fundamental changes in the way the game plays out. It's one of those systems that we've, we've really had to have a complete cultural rethink about the way that we approach the problem because um, the, uh, the battles in previous Total War games could probably be compartmentalised down into fairly simple systems in the way that they play through. Um, and in Empire, I think, um, it's much more freeform. In the sort of dawn of the modern era, um, it feels a bit more close, you know, if you play the British Empire or you play French Empire. The flip side to this is, because we're more familiar with the era of George Washington and that bloke with tighter trousers than a Camden Indy kid, the team needs to be painstakingly fastidiously accurate in its depiction of the time. Good job they're all massive, shameless history geeks then. <laughs> Gone through the whole box set of Sharp, which is, which is wicked. We've got a whole library of, of things that we've of referenced details in terms of um, video and, uh, uh, and literature. It's been a really interesting project to work on for that. I feel like I've gone back to school a little bit. This is an interesting task, you know, because from an artist's point of view, artists like to be creative, but with Empire, we, we have to, you know, be as accurate as possible. A lot of our fans like you know, have criticised us about accuracy, so this is, will be the most accurate Total War game to date. That sounds pretty unequivocal to us, and we wouldn't mess with this guy, he's on the hard stuff. That, so, sorry, this is, this is my coffee. Accuracy, notwithstanding the necessary concessions to fun games demand, is obsession to Creative Assembly, so when it came to boat building, everything had to be not just ship shape, but Bristol fashion too. We've gotten uh, plans from the British Naval Museum for all of the ships. So we have these massive plans that we scanned and built all of the uh, ship models based on. So there is no way that anyone is going to have more accurate ship models than, than we've made. Now, you'll know if you pay attention to such things that there's a general shift in the RTS genre towards accessibility. It's a word that has the hardcore frothing at the mouth in rabid anger. But fear not, for Creative Assembly wants to assure us it's not about to dump the rich strategic depth that is the cornerstone of the series, even if it is streamlining in a few places. We've got to be careful of, um, you know, making sure that uh, we keep the game deep and rich for, 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 for our existing, you know, fans. Um, but we definitely are focused on, um, you know, making the game more accessible as well and bringing, bringing in, you know, new people to what we think is a great gameplay experience. You know, the soul of Total War is, is, is that it's a, it's a great big game that, that, that people, you know, in terms of a single player experience can spend a lot of time really getting it, getting it you know, getting into, the, uh, in, into a deep gameplay experience. And that's why the studio says it has absolutely no plans to shift the Total War PC experience onto console. Dumbing down is not an option. The, the fact that Empire Total War is a PC-only game allows us to, to really, um, you know, not make any compromises uh, and do what we what we really want to do. What we really want to do. Of course, we've had console spin-offs before, such as Spartan Total Warrior, 
although the more recent Viking Battle for Asgard was a bit rubbish. So if not the full Empire experience, how about an 18th century spin-off? Um, well, I, I, I can't really answer that. All right, mate, only asking. The 18th century hijinks of Empire are, as noted, the most modern creative assembly has ever dared go. But where next? There are a whole load of periods that we're interested in. Um, and, you know, we always try to make sure that the features of the game are appropriate to the period, you know, fit the period. I think it would be cool to do something that was 20th century. It would be really interesting to do a game that would kind of span from, you know, 1900 to 1950. So we get all that interesting tech in there, but at the meantime we could maybe avoid some of the horrible stuff that went on as well, which we don't really want to be simulating. Our idle speculation aside, the studio is right now 100% focused on delivering Empire. You can look forward to the engrossing and essentially unique blend of macro and micro management Total War is famed for, all presented in what is already quite exquisite detail. But sitting back and admiring the view isn't going to help us turn America into a monarchy or scupper the Gallic revolutionaries, both of which can happen by the way. We need some expert tips. Don't play it like you played Medieval or Rome. Just look at it, think about it, and uh, you know, play it differently, otherwise you're going to get slaughtered. Spread your firepower, that's definitely a good one. And if the enemy's advancing on you, put yourself in good position with your firepower maximised and, and just let it come. Use formations, line, lines of battle. Keep your ships in line and you'll, you'll win. If your girlfriend or wife is getting grumpy, just turn the game off for a while and give her some attention. You know because we don't, we don't want to uh, cause any trouble. Who said romance is dead? Now, every major Total War release has scooped a mightily impressive 9 out of 10 on Eurogamer. Will Empire be the first to nail the perfect 10? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of hard work going in. It's, it's difficult when you're at this stage of production because you're obviously so, um, you're so entrenched in what you're doing. Well, I hope so. I really do. What would you score it out of 10? I'd score it 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's up to you guys. It's up to you guys. <laughs> what would you score out of uh, Well, you know, I'm pretty critical. So I, I, I'm going to, well, for you guys, yeah, we're going to give it a 10. We're going to give it a 10. But for my guys out there, you know, you're getting a 6 unless you pick it up. You can check out our in-depth hands-on impressions of the naval battles by hitting the red button. Empire Total War is out exclusively for PC next February.